the word is not doing something to you, how can you really impact another? It's just like a testimony. When you share your testimony, you don't know who it's going to touch. You know, he allows you to experience that. Just like um, the Lord was speaking to me last night. And he said to me, he said, you know, a lot of people wonder why I allow issues in their lives. But it's because it's through those issues that people can see me. It's through those issues. And so this morning, I am going to speak about an individual that's, to my, in my eyes, he is a very strong giant. He, he, he. He was a prophet in the word of God and he had some downtime and he was in ministry for 40 years and didn't see a whole lot of increase. But God still used his prayers for the Israelites. God you still used him in the midst of what he was doing. The Lord doing. is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. Amen. It is good that one should hope and wait quietly. Ha, huh, quietly. <laughs> For the salvation of the Lord, it is good for a man to bear the yoke of his youth. Let him sit alone and keep silent because God has laid it on him. Let him put his mouth in the dust. There may yet be hope. Hope. Let him give his cheek to the one who strikes him and be full of reproach. For the Lord would not cast off forever <laughs> though he causes grief yet he will show compassion according to the multitude of his mercy for he does not afflict willingly <laughs> nor grieve the children of man to crush under one's feet all the prisoners of the earth to turn aside the justice due to the man before the face of the most high or subvert a man in his cause. The Lord does not approve. Who is he who speaks and come to pass when the Lord has not commanded it? Uh, it is not from the mouth of the Most High. Mm, my God. That woe and well-being proceed. Why should a living man complain a man for a punishment of his sins? Let us search out and examine our ways. And turn back to the Lord. Let him lift our hearts and hands to God in heaven. Huh. That scripture alone. That scripture alone has ton of meat. But what really brings me to the place of humility is the fact that in spite of what Jeremiah saw at the time, he knew who his hope was. Amen. This morning, I'm going to be preaching about he is your portion, not your potion. He is your portion, not your potion. Now, you have to understand two things. Portion means inheritance. It's something that you gain. It's something that you take within yourself. Potion is a magical element that people use to get a quick fix. If it means drugs or um, a sex or um, the TV or different things that these days people use to give them a fix. It gives them a high. It allows them to eliminate the process. Nothing to die. 
say, what is an inheritance? What is, what are you talking about, Lady V? What do you, I don't understand what you mean. When you accept Jesus Christ into your life, you accept the inheritance. Amen. Amen. Well, that means when you're sick in your body, when I was going through epilepsy, I had the portion. I had the inheritance. Even though I had to wait, wait quietly and wait for my healing, I knew I had the inheritance. I knew I had the portion. I Amen. knew my healing was coming. So why was I being afraid of what my body was going through? It was when I had to be like Jeremiah, pull from my hope and say, God, help me. Help me in spite of what my body's going through. In spite of me going through these seizures in the middle of the night. And I'm going to and fro because my head hurt, my mouth hurt. Help me because I know you are my source. Mm -hmm. It was then that he healed my body. Amen. He healed my body. He cleared your car because we have the inheritance. Hallelujah. See, the enemy wants to do things to try to question the inheritance. Mm. How are you going to question something you already have? Mm. How are you going to allow the enemy to question something? That is her vehicle. That is the vehicle God has given to her. That's what happens when you're part of the inheritance. Mm. You get what the inheritance gives, which is good things. We have not because we ask not. Come on. Oh, my God. So at that time, she waited quietly. Even though in spite of that, her flesh was rising, she held her mouth. She did not speak to the thing, but she spoke to the thing, if that makes sense. She knew that that thing was there, but she spoke to the enemy that would try to mess up her day because we were having a good day that day. She was speaking into the atmosphere. And what happened? She passed her test. The inheritance cleaned it. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Like the woman of God danced today. He washes us clean if we decide to allow him to do so. It's that simple. Don't allow people to make church so complicated. It's that simple. But let's talk about our own city. When you see these devastations and these young people are dying, mm -hmm. they're going out at night and they're looking for something, potion. Mm -hmm. uh, Mm. They're looking for something. They're looking for love in all the wrong places. They're going out and selling drugs. And they're doing all these things. Po po a potion. Mm. And then they go, but they go and they think they're coming home. Mm. But they don't come home. You see that devastation. And I believe that Jeremiah was fighting discouragement. Mm -hmm. Let's call it, let's keep it real. Mm -hmm. He was fighting discouragement because he this if you really read this, when God really took me to this, I could hear his discouragement in his his mouth when he was speaking this poem. God help them. Help them, God. Help them, God. Just like us. When you really think about it, I'm praying for these young people in the street of Harrisburg. Help them. Yes. They think they're coming back home. But they might not come back home. They might not. But in spite of that, when you have portion, mm. you don't get discouraged by what your eyes see. Mm. It's hard, I will tell you. I fight discouragement all the time. When people say to me, you were not called. You were not called. You called yourself. That can be discouraging. Nobody's in your church. That could be discouraging. When you have to go and try to help people that don't want to be helped, that could be discouraging. But I say like Jeremiah, because I have my portion and I have the inheritance and I have something to look forward to, which is glory. See, this is the thing. If you are not saved and you do not know Jesus as your personal savior, you don't have the inheritance. Hmm. The potion will not do it. Deeds will not do it. You sending your money and envelopes to the church and making sure they got tithes and offering, you watch 
fellowshipping in the, in, the, in the house, but you're not leaving your house to fellowship with believers, that will not do it. Jeremiah in his spirit. Amen. See, a lot of people say, oh, I see the Joshua, I see the Goliath, I see Peter, I see, oh yeah, I see that. But I see Jeremiah at times when he can get in a room with people that know. See, God will put you in the midst of your enemies. <laughs> He'll set a table before you. I see him do it every time. He did it with me. He'll put you in front of your enemies and he'll say, go in there. I told you to. He gave you instruction. Go in there. Go in there with boldness. Humility leads your tongue. Amen. And when they come after you, pull from your portion. Pull from the source. In spite of them not calling you what you've been called. I have called you. <laughs> okay, they don't call you Pastor Fontaine. Okay, they don't call you evangelist. Okay, they don't call you this and that. Guess what? God knows what he has called me to do. Mm. I don't need nothing in front of my name. Mm. 